I, I really like Matsi. That was like the missing ingredient to my yeah. steroid cycle. Just showed me the next level of being able to get down to that low body fat once your mitochondria are just running so efficiently. Nothing suffers both mentally and physically. Hmm. Uh, Matsi though, I think we can classify as an anabolic because it upregulates ATP synthesis by kind of, you know, providing nutrients for the mitochondria. Um, of course, Matsi has uh, made a comeback thanks to your stack, Dean. The SLU uh, and the Matsi mm -hmm. and the Methylene Blue stack, which is now being run by many a bodybuilder to a great uh, dismay and pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, so Matsi, how I, I, I can classify it as A tier. Okay. Also because it's been added to the water prohibited list, so that now we know that it works. <laughs> Let's do something. <laughs> yeah. And I, I found that, so recently I got a 10 milligram vial um, and I started microdosing it per day instead of doing one shot where you might get an allergic reaction. Um, right? Some people get terrible uh, anaphylactic shock even from it if they reconstitute and inject it too fast. So some people get really get an adverse reaction. But I've been doing one milligram on workout days um, with a stack of methylene blue and SLU. And uh, my God, it's it's great energy-wise. Okay. Now, how much that translates into anabolism, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but since the mitochondrial efficiency is so improved, um, you would expect some sort of anabolism out of it? Dean, maybe? I mean, the other, the other side to it without getting too, like, I guess, nerdy is if your mitochondria are more efficient and you're turning over ATP in, at a higher rate in terms of them when you carry over to your training performance mm -hmm. and your, your ability to produce potential force over a period of time. So obviously you're, you're going to run into a case where when you're training, your ATP pool diminishes and then your, you know, your phosphocreatine system or the phosphogen system kicks in. In theory, you might get an extra rep or two before the phosphogen system has to take over. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not maybe directly anabolic, but it's improving the efficiency of the energy powerhouses that are fueling your training. So, you know, as a direct cascade, yeah, there is some level of anabolism coming from them without them being directly anabolic. So it's basically like creatine. Kind of. We in take two. over after creatine ran out. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And isn't there a decrease in mitochondrial density in bodybuilders versus in aerobic athletes, you'd see an increase. Yeah. So it yeah. wouldn't be directly anabolic, right? Because it kind of do the opposite thing. But if it gets you, it allows you to increase your work capacity, then it could somehow contribute to that. Yeah, that's, that's what I've angle. noticed from this from this stack yeah. of you know, the mitochondrial. Yeah. So you, 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 you no started running, use, you, you started running this stack also? Me? Uh, Kurt? No, yeah? no, I've never used it. I don't, I've, okay. I've honestly never used any of these obscure things. I've never even used BPC. Really? I have a bottle in my fridge. I gave my wife the option when I, her knees, the cartilage in her knees was not great. And I gave her the option mm. of growth hormone for BPC and I left it up to her and she had me list the benefits of both. And she said, well, let's do the GH. And so she's been on the GH fixed the knees. So <laughs> the bottle of BPC is unopened. All roads. I've never, back. not the wood, I've never been injured in training for 37 years. I've never hurt myself. My God. Amazing. So she trained with me one time. I'll get you injured. You hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I don't, I've never had a use for it. <laughs> okay. And what about this, this mitochondrial stuff? Like me never and used Dean been raving about it. Never used any did, of it. Did we spark your interest or you're like, yeah, yeah it's interesting. I just, I just never had much of a use for any of it. It's mm. good, man. So who knows? I'm not against it. Mm. I, I really like Matsi and SLU and, and methylene blue. I think that's a life changing stack. Um, yeah, I think that's a, that was like the missing ingredient to my yeah. steroid cycle. Yeah, I think what, like what we keep coming back to, like with my prep this year, it just showed me the next level of being able to get down to that low body fat. But once your mitochondria are just running so efficiently, nothing suffers both mentally and physically. Hmm. Um, you know, even now, currently, my body fat, even I'm what, seven kg up on my stage weight, I'm pretty much near contest condition still. Like, I haven't gotten fat. And I'm eating 4,800 calories on training days now. 
and yeah, rest, that's what I'm re- eating also. Rest days I'm at three thousand seven hundred. So, I mean, even from a body fat perspective, with the mitochondria being more mm. efficient, I just haven't gotten fat post show mm. with all the food I've been eating. Yeah. So that's what I noticed also. So after that initial fat gain from the United States, eating cheesecakes and whatever, <laughs> that's where I gained most of my fat. And now I'm eating like twice as much, literally. I'm eating about 4,500, 4,800, depending on the day. Um, and I'm getting leaner. I'm recomping. It's, you know, it's so weird. Okay, well, my, my PD intake increased a little bit. Maybe the growth hormone high dose helps with that. Uh, and being more regimented, obviously, than walking around the United States and freestyling the meals. But yeah, I, I feel that I, I've never recomped on close to 5,000 calories. It's it's pretty insane. And that's what most people tell that SLU and, and, the, and the mitochondrial upregulation really prevents fat gain uh, during the off season. Yeah. And that's, I mean, of course, yeah. a game changer because the leaner you can start prep, the shorter prep is, and the more muscle mass you can retain because you're less tired at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? I mean, That's we, the hard part. Like most guys, just fade away at the end because they've been dieting for twenty weeks. We we never adjusted my calories once during the whole prep. If anything, I had more refeeds, like I kept saying. So yeah, the the actual efficiency of the system improved as prep went on, as opposed to for most, it's actually you're pulling calories away because of again we're coming probably back to mitochondrial efficiency drops or their mm-hmm. ability to burn fat, or they just don't have enough mitochondria to support all these processes so i think I uh, the more we start educating on this now um the condition we're going to see with bigger guys might improve again um well i mean it was kind of apparent that this year's olympia so if you can lead the way then uh hopefully uh you know the uh, mr olympia quality and the classic quality can improve we'll never get credit for it but that's all right <laughs> that's all right <laughs> I don't listen to the anabolic round table at all I <laughs> sure you don't <laughs> okay so I'm, I'm I will, we'll revisit Motsi a little bit more when we discuss the fat burners but I'm just going to put in A tier because it does provide some sort of performance enhancing benefit which is more than you would be able to say from MK677 or insulin or growth from monsecretagogues um just based on my personal experience, I, I think it's close to Pharma GH and Incrolex. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It really keeps the day going. 